In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can extend a list. Now, this will involve having two lists and adding to the end of one of the lists the content of another list. And in doing this, we're going to compare the extend method with the append method that was looked at in the previous video. Let's consider this computer program and look to the first line and you can see this line is going to create a list that's going to have the name subjects underscore taught. Now schematically what we will see here is the following. We're going to have a list which is an instance of the list class and we can see it has three elements and we can look to the index and see that goes from zero all the way up to two meaning three elements in total and if we look at the content of the elements we have an analysis, design and coding as strings and that's because if we look here in the code you can see we have analysis, design and coding and if you look here in the code you can see that subjects underscore taught and of course that's the name of the list shown here in the diagram. Now what we have here is an instance of the list class that has three elements and the items which are the elements have within them the values of analysis, design and coding. Now because this is an object which is an instance of the list class it'll have methods and one of the methods we looked at in the previous videos was the append method. Now I'll be looking at that again in a moment but I would like now to go on to look at this program statement and what this is going to do is going to create another list and I'm going to show that schematically here and you can see that this list again it's an instance of the list class and if you look at the indexes you can see they go from 0 to 1 and what we have here are two elements and we can see that this one stores the string Java and this one stores the string Python and that's because if we look at the code here you can see we have Java and Python. If we look at this, this is the name bound to the instance of the list and of course that name appears here in the schematic diagram. Now these two lines will print out the content of the lists but I'm going to come back to look at those what I'm now interested in is this line here and what we have got is a message and this message is going to be sent to this list, this instance of the list class, this object and what's going to be invoked is this append method and if you look to the append method you can see that we're passing in as a parameter new underscore subjects which of course is this instance here a list with two elements that takes in Java and Python so if I now consider this schematically what we're going to see is a message going to this list and we can see we have the append method being invoked and here you can see we're passing in the other list that contains Java and Python. Now schematically what's going to happen is this we're going to have another element added to the list and I can see that because if I look here you can now see the indices goes from 0 all the way up to 3 but look what's in this element position and the answer is this list which we can see here in the diagram and it's important to realize that what we have got here is a string this is a string, this is a string and this is a list where the elements of this list happen to have a string and a string where they are Java and Python respectively. So we don't have in this element the string Java and the string Python. What we have is another list and this is fine because if you remember with a list we can have different types in elements. So string, 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 list. If I wanted to get at this element, then I would have to use this name, subjects underscore taught, this three, and this zero as part of the computer program. But we'll look at that in another video. Here, what I would like to stress is what we have done on this line is added instances of the string class and those instances you can see appear here and what we've done on this line is add this instance of the list class to here to this element. So let's consider this computer program and its runtime. Now when this line executes 
what we're going to get is this created an instance of the list class and you can see that it contains analysis design and coding and the element indices go from zero to two and the name is subject or this line well that's going to produce another list which I'm showing here now this line is going to print out this literal string and the subjects taught which is this list here so if you come down to this line you can see there is the literal string the subjects taught are and here you can see the content of the list the analysis the design and the coding that appeared here in the code now this line is responsible for outputting this literal string and the new subject so if we look we can see the output is here there's the literal string and there's the content of the other list and you can see within it it has java and python now this line is a message and it's a message to the instance that's bound to the name subjects taught and i can show that message schematically here and we can see that we're going to invoke the append method and we're taking in this parameter new underscore subjects and what this append method is going to do it's going to append to the end of the subjects underscore taught list this list here and we can see that schematically as you can see here so what we have now is a string a string a string a list now the list contains a string and a string but it's important to realize that these two strings are not inside the element of this list. They are inside the element of this list here. So this list is a list inside a list in one of the element positions. One of the element positions of this list. So you can think of this as being nestled inside this list. So we have to repeat a string, a string, a string, a list. Now, this line is responsible for printing this literal string and this list. Now, of course, if we consider this list, as you can see it here, we have now got it with this additional element containing the list. So if I look to the runtime here, you can see that is the literal string output, and this is now the list. And you can see that it consists of a string, a string, a string, and this is the list, because you can see we have these square brackets here and we have a string and a string that's inside those square brackets telling us that this is a list it is a list in the element position that has the index of three within this list here so this is a list within a list but overall we have a string a string a string and a list if we come to this line you can see that this will print out this literal string and this list and if we look to the runtime here you can see that's the literal string and this is the list so we can see that if we look at all of the output this was the list before we appended anything to it and this is the list after we appended this list to it whereas here we can see we're outputting the list called new subjects and here we're outputting it again and you can see that hasn't changed but what has happened is that this list appears here within this list so we can see that the append has appended a list consequently we are only adding one element to this list and that element happens to be a list and that list happens to have two elements that contain java and python now let's consider this computer program which shows a slight amendment to the one we've already considered and the amendment is shown here we use the word extend instead of the word append in other words this is a method that's going to be within the class of the list whereas previously the method we looked at invoking was the append here we are going to be invoking the extend method this line will produce an instance of the list class which we can show schematically here and we can see that it has the three elements we can look to the indices and see they go from zero through to two and of course this is the name of the list if i look at this line it too will create 
a list, an object, an instance of the list class, and I'm showing that here. And we can see that has two elements, and we can see its indices is 0 and 1, and we can see that its name is new underscore subject. Now these two lines I'll come back to discuss in a moment, but let's now go on to this line and we can see it is a message. It is a message to this object and it will invoke this method, the extend method, and previously this as I've already said was the append method, and this extend method will be taking in this new underscore subject. In other words, it will be taking in as an input parameter this list here. And when we consider the message, we know it's going to this object, which is this one here schematically. So I'm going to show this message being sent to this, as you can see by this arrow. And if you look here, you can see that we're asking to invoke the extend method and we're passing in the new underscore subject subjects as an input parameter. Now what this will do, it will invoke the extend method that was defined in the list class and of course the instance of the list class will have access to this method and the result will be the following. Now the extend method has behaved differently to the append method. What it's done effectively it's taken this list as its input parameter and it's split it up into Java and Python. And the Java string has been added here and the Python string has been added here. So if we now look at this list, we can see that it has grown to five elements that has the indices from zero through to four. And if you remember what happened when we had the append, it only had four elements going from the indices of zero through to the indices of three. Whereas here, we've added two extra elements to the original list because the extend has broken down this internally in some way and decided that it's going to add Java to here and Python to here. Whereas previously the append would have added this lot as a list. So let's now turn our attention to the program and the runtime and we know that these two lines will create the lists appropriately and this line will output the literal string and the subjects underscore taught list and there is the literal string and there is the list when it was initially created. Now this line, well what that's going to do is output the literal string and the list new underscore subjects. There's the literal string and there is the list containing Java and Python. And then of course we know what this will do. It will extend the original list declared here by passing in this list and we've seen what happened there on the previous slide and here what we're now going to see is the printing of the literal string and the subject taught and that's the literal string being printed and this is the list now it has been altered by the sending of the message that invoked the extend method and if you have a look you can see that it's extended by these two here where this is a string and this is a string so here originally we had three elements elements in the list and now if you look here we have five elements in the list with Java being in one element position and Python being in another and different element position and if you remember in the previous program when we used the append these two were still within the list that was sent as the input parameter with the append method whereas here we can remember from the animation a moment ago that the extend method takes the list that contains java and python and each string is added to the original list in their own index positions here and here and of course this statement simply outputs the literal string and the new underscore subjects list there's your literal string and there you can see the list containing Java and Python. So if we consider the list here and here, you can see they haven't altered. They were just the input parameters. But there's your original list that was created on this line. And this is the list after the extend has been invoked, after this message. And you can see what the extend did is a Java to one of the element positions and added Python to another 
element position. So we have five elements and the index of those five elements goes from zero through to four. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.